We believe that government should invest in a holistic policy package, what we call a whole of a systems approach, and ensure a balanced and effective implementation of these policies, uh, coordinate policies across all levels of government. Uh, we believe that thematic diversity is central in ensuring both the interest and the cooperation of partner countries, and an effective monitoring strategy and implementing strategy should be adopted at the European Union level. It is uh, MPI's belief that European immigration cooperation should take an approach which is a whole of system, as I just mentioned. Uh, it is our belief and our experience that no single migration issue can appro be approached in isolation. Security, borders, integration, human rights and humanitarian issues, these are all interconnected. We would, in this context, like to point our, our, out our awareness of the unique challenges that European nations and governments today face. These are both economic challenges, demographic challenges, and political challenges. It is uh, not the least for these reasons that we strongly welcome their willingness to engage in a constructive dialogue concerning all aspects of the migration agenda, and we look forward to the negotiations. Thank you. Given that the proposal focuses on human rights and democracy, given the fact that most trafficking still comes from the outside of the EU to member state countries, and given that migration and migration policy and trafficking and human beings are obviously linked, I'm here to also alert you to the importance of making issues of trafficking central in your debates this weekend. Human trafficking is a crime against humanity. It involves the act of recruiting, transporting, transferring, or receiving a person through use of force, coercion, or other means for the purpose of exploiting them. Worldwide, <coughs> the ILO estimates that organized crime networks are responsible for 2.45 million people being in forced labor as a result of trafficking. In the EU, we're talking of hundreds of thousands of people uh, every year being exposed to sexual exploitation, forced removal of eggs, illegal adoption, illegal domestic work, and forced marriages. This is a severe form of violence against mainly women and children. Trafficking also is today one of the most profitable types of crime and has a, uh, the least number of prosecutions. This needs to be changed. We have to be ahead of the traffickers. An integrated strategy against trafficking in human beings is the only way forward. I am, of course, encouraged by current tools and initiatives on trafficking in human beings at the EU level. The Council has adopted a legislation on preventing and combating trafficking in March 2011. This is an instrument that is comprehensive and addresses the problem in all its facets. This new piece of legislation that should be implemented by all member states <coughs> in the European Union by April 2013 stresses the importance of ensuring a gender and human rights perspective on all pro processes relating to the prevention and protection of victims of human trafficking and to the prosecution of criminals. It adopts a zero-tolerance approach to traffickers and it brings strong provisions on protection, assistance and support to victims. While the legislation is a huge improvement in the law enforcement at the European level, all of this is unlikely to be, to be effective unless it is underpinned by solid and coherent foundations. We need to be ahead of traffickers. This gives us some main challenges. Organized crime networks constantly find new ways of recruiting victims and trafficking takes various forms. We therefore need intensive research on new emerging trends in trafficking, a shared knowledge on the phenomenon between member states on new forms of prevention in countries of origin and of destination. Research and shared knowledge is essential for addressing and removing the root causes of the phenomenon in both countries of destination and origin and for devising effective prevention methods. Human trafficking is currently not a priority in all member states. Furthermore, it has become clear that the identification of human trafficking and its prosecution is treated differently in member states. It is therefore of utmost importance that a common strategy combating the trafficking in human beings is adopted. We need to ensure that every country has an appropriate definition of trafficking in human beings and also a national body and a national referral mechanism through which state actors fulfill their obligations to protect and promote 
the human rights of traffic to places. Trafficking is not an isolated issue to be treated by uh, experts. Reversing the trend of trafficking in human beings means that we have to adopt strong policies and work in close systematic and constructive partnerships within and across policy sectors and amongst all types of stakeholders, including non-member countries, public, private and anti-trafficking stakeholders, uh, especially NGOs and their networks. We need to establish mechanisms to coordinate action and relate directly to member states, non-member countries and EU agencies, such as Europol, Frontex, the Fundamental Rights Agency and other important actors. This should include the training of migration officers, police and border control in spotting traffic human beings. This integrated way of working together is the only way forward, and I see the European Parliament as a key, a key partner to our efforts. The Parliament has already displayed great political will to address human trafficking in a holistic way. Any valuable policy linked to migration should address and be consistent with efforts to stop trafficking in human beings. I therefore trust this meeting, that this meeting will make human trafficking the highest priority. Working against the trafficking of human beings is working for the rights of human beings. Thank you for listening. Okay. And now to our <coughs> final speaker. That was uh, Marike Van Donning from Australia International. Yeah. Dear ladies and gentlemen, by the Commission on the 23rd of March 2012 is welcomed by Amnesty International and La Strada International. We are pleased to witness that the Commission has uttered a more humane vision for migration policy by incorporating fundamental rights in it. However, for the time being, we have identified several areas of concern with regard to the new Commission's proposal that we would like to highlight now. When making these claims, Amnesty International and the Strada International are referring to fundamental conventions that are the Refugee Convention from 1951 and the Universal Decla Declaration of Human Rights from 1948. First, uh, the Commission's new proposal does not distinguish enough the terms when naming migrants. The aspect of trafficking in human beings has to be treated as a separate problem that needs a specific approach. Second, together with the human rights approach, the proposal still secure, securitizes Schengen borders and creates borders of Europe, as it is member states who are in the position to decide which migrants are welcomed or not. The mobility partnership programs welcome high-skilled workers and academics. It is clear that the EU searches for its own benefit and gain, meeting our vision of the policy focusing on the single man. It has been proven that immigrants are needed for the EU as they occupy by work areas and positions native Europeans are not willing to take. Low paid labor is often unregulated. There is a clear need to regulate it in order to improve protection standards and prevent the creation of labor exploitation conditions and consequently human trafficking. <coughs> Lester Rada International and Amnesty International believe that regularization programs are a humane and sensible response for these groups of people. Third, the Commission's new proposal suggests a large cooperation with the third countries in order to prevent migrants from entering the EU territory. The conditions of refugee camps created in the MENA region up in the aftermath of the Arab Spring are not humane. It is against the Article 13 of the Universal Decl Declaration of Human Rights that proclaims that everybody has their rights to move freely within the global society. 